All right. Well, hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our BG5 Live. Great to have each of you here with us today. Today is March 22nd, 2022. This is episode 148. And today we're going to take a look at trait number 25. We're going to take a look at trait 25 in quality five. And what we're going to look at today is healing the spiritual warrior. It's interesting that the 25 happens right after crisis, right? After crisis, we return to this innocence and healing is necessary. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. So before we get started, let's say hello to our panel. So let's start with Anna. Great to have you back, Anna. We missed yeah, you last I week. Yeah, I'm glad I missed it too. I'm sorry not to be there, but I'm glad to be back and hello to everyone. Great to have you here. Welcome, welcome. And let's go to Shelly. Hello, Shelly. Welcome. Hello, hello, everyone. Great to be here too. Looking forward Great. to looking into this trait yes. of the spiritual warrior. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome, Shelly. It's great to have you here. And let's go to Linda. Hello, Linda. Welcome. Thank you so much. Happy to be here and um, looking forward to heal after a emotional crisis of last week because, well, oh boy, I have encountered one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hopefully you all survived the, uh, the, the first uh, movement into crisis. Again, we are going to be in crisis in what's hidden over the next three years, and we're going to have different life aspects move into a crisis coming up as well. So knowing that healing is on the other side, knowing in a sense, this spiritual awakening is always on the other side of crisis can also help support us as we continue to move through the crisis of these next few years and uh, and of these next couple months as well. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. So let's uh, dive in to taking a look at trait 25. Now, again, we are still in March. And again, the March is all about the emotional doubt and openness that leads to crisis, returning us to our innocence. So with the 25, it's returning us to our innocence to gain new opinions of control. So we took a look at family and friendship. We've taken a look at doubt. We've taken a look at openness. Last week, we took a look at crisis. And I always, as I mentioned before, find it fascinating that innocence, the 25, this triumph and survival enrich the spirit and result in the wonder of being. Isn't that fascinating that that happens right after crisis? So we talked a lot about this last week, that crisis is really an opening or crisis is a wake-up call to, to grow, to learn, to expand. And as we learn and grow and expand through the crisis, it returns us back to innocence. Innocence is also universal love as well. You can also see that in crisis when we're in crisis that oftentimes humanitarian aid and supporting each other and helping each other um, gets heightened um, during crisis. So again, there's two sides of the coin and you can see that again, this returns us to innocence. This returns us to what's important. This in returns us to universal love. So we're going to be talking about that today. Um, we are also in this week going to be moving into opinions. We'll talk about opinions next week. And we wrap up the month with the 21 in control. So again, we have now moved through all of the emotions. Again, I also find it fascinating that the 36 of crisis also happens um, at the end, it's the last of all of the traits of emotional intelligence. You can also see I highlighted here that communication is in 22, as well as our personal law is also in 22. Remember, we talked about 22 a couple of weeks ago, where it's really the opening of the door. It's open, opening the door to change, which then leads to crisis. So what this is also telling us is soon we'll be in crisis around communication, and soon we will also be in crisis around our personal uh, our personal law as well. 
So again, um, dealing with all of these, in a sense, waves of crisis, knowing that on the other side of crisis, what we're going to talk about today is innocence. So just as we're taking a look here at the month of collective crisis and revolution, again, we took a look at the core essence last week. Um, this week, March 26, approximately to the or 24th to the 26th, again, it moves into communication, and March 26th to the 31st, um, it also moves uh, uh, principles or revolution moves into values, right? So again, this is going to be a continuing, continuing theme of crisis and revolution as we continue through both this month as well as April as well. So just be aware of that. And I, I think it's brilliant that we're talking about what's on the other side today. So uh, before we move forward, I don't know if, if Linda or Shelly or Anna, if there's anything that, that you would like to share or anything that you've noticed from this last week uh, in being in crisis and now, again, moving now to innocence, which we'll talk about today. Yeah, I have a comment. Um, yeah, I had a mini crisis right before last BG5. Uh, had had to take some medication for a little procedure and it affected me terribly. Um, and it was short lived, but it interrupted several events that during that day. Um, and sometimes you have to just, to me, the, the 25 has an element of resilience in it. And you have to, you have to just keep rolling sometimes with, flowing with whatever's going on. So crisis can often feel like things are not flowing, they're conflicting, they're crashing, they're polar polarized or whatever, but when you actually sort of settle in and accept it, then you start rolling and I think you automatically start utilizing what we're gonna talk about today. Yeah. Yeah, beautifully said, Anna. Absolutely. Yeah, Linda. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I, I also had a crisis uh, concerning with my hormones. It was just completely out of balance all of a sudden. And it was just like, whoop, and you are in a crisis. And I've never experienced that before. I did not have any energy at all. And I'm an express builder. So normally I'm just jumping up and down, doing everything. But now I was completely floored. And it also brought me an important, and it teach me an important lesson already because I needed to take some rest. And normally I'm just running and running and running around. And I felt like, okay, I just need some rest. And I only want to be in one place and that's my garden. And I really felt the shift from the 36 to the 25 because universal love is also the love of things and my love for the garden, for the, for the plants and the flowers. It's just, I was in awe with everything that was getting ready to reveal itself after the winter. And it was beautiful weather. It's it's still beautiful weather here in the Netherlands. So ha, huh, yes. So that really helped me. So I I really felt this the switch from okay, um, I don't feel well, and I feel different than normal, but also the um, the um, soothing influence of my garden of the nature. And it, it teach me the lesson that I need to be more in balance, whether my hormones are getting um, crazy again, I feel so because of my age. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt like, okay, nothing is burning, nothing is bad is happening when I'm more in balance, when I'm just doing other stuff other than working. So um, I already, experienced the other side but also was really struggling with not able being able to deliver what I normally delivered yeah yeah 
Beautifully said, Linda. And that brings up another good point. It's spring. We just moved into spring. And isn't it interesting that we move into spring when we shift into the, the 25 as well, right? So um, spring is returning to that innocence. So I think that's brilliant. Thank you so much, Linda. All right, well, let's dive into this innocence. Let's dive into today's theme. And again, if we take a look at trait 25, it is about innocence. It's also the spirit of self, and it can also be the spiritual warrior. Uh, this is, can be seen as the priest and the priestess. This is one of the things that we take a look at in OC 16 as well. It's kind of the capacity or the spirit of the business as well. So when we take a look at trait 25, this is the perfection of action through uncontrived and spontaneous nature. So it really is, in a sense, um, the return to spring, the return to nature, the return to being in your garden and new life starting to unfold. It's loving everything equally. This is about universal love. Uh, so it's not love of self. It's not love of humanity. It's not love of the body. This is universal love. And this is loving everything equally. This is loving, loving life and loving everything about everything, right? In, in an equal way, that's part of what the innocence is all about. And one of the things to recognize about innocence, however, is that innocence is always being tested. And when we take a look at the 25, this is the capacity to meet shocking life initiations. Because on the other side of the 25 is the 51. The 51 is about shock. So this is the capacity to meet shocking life initiations, like a spiritual warrior fired up and ready no matter what the circumstances. So interesting that this happens right after the 36, right? Because again, we have this ability, oftentimes the crisis is a shock. Oftentimes the crisis is a shocking initiation. This is also part of the mystical way. And this is the mystical way of moving away from dependence on the tribe and moving into dependence on ourself, which is also, if we take a look at the times that we're in, in this transition from the era of planning to the era of the individual, this is also exactly what is happening as well. And it's going to be shocking, right? And you may not have experienced the shock yet. You may not have been in crisis yet. I guarantee you sometime over the next the next three years, for sure, you know, something's going to reveal itself. And how are you going to deal with it? Are you going to allow it to take you down? Or are you going to stand up to it like a spiritual warrior, right? To meet that those shocking life initiations as a spiritual warrior, right? Again, no matter what the circumstances, standing strong. And this is also with innocence, it's also leaping into the void. It's sort of the, the fool just stepping into the innocence of not knowing, you know, what what's new or what's possible. So it's leaping into the void and landing on your feet and becoming wise in the way that you can empower others. This is an individual trait, an individual strength. This is about self-empowerment as well. So as you empower yourself, you also empower others. And you may emerge a bit wounded, right? Sometimes we have that loss of innocence. That's part of what the shock can be all about. So you may emerge a bit wounded, but you ultimately triumph. And the survival enriches your spirit and the spirit of those around you. So again, this is just on the other side of crisis, right? So again, standing through that crisis as a spiritual warrior, right? It enriches your spirit. I've been there. I've done that. I've survived. And getting to the other side, what are the lessons that you have learned that really enrich who you are, enrich your spirit, enrich your learning? 
and its capacity in the OC16. So in a large group or organization, this is one of the OC16 traits. It's one of the OC16 roles. And it represents also the spirit of the organization. Again, this can be the priest or the priestess. Um, ultimately, it is the capacity to have everybody on the same page, moving in the same direction, and in a sense, behaving the, the same way uh, to really represent what the spirit of the whole organization is all about. So you can see in this picture, it's almost like a, a breaking free, um, you know, and it's this return to innocence. Again, we can kind of see the chain, you know, as crisis, and that crisis actually allows us to, to break free, to take that leap into the void, to land on our feet, right, and, and in order to, to also fly as well. So this is what innocence is all about. So I would love to hear from our panel. I think li both Linda and Anna do have the 25. Uh, so I would love to, to hear both the, from both of you first, just in having this trait, how do you experience it or what shows up for you? Anna. Um, well, I would say this has been a guiding force in my life. Um, from very, very early on. Um, just trying to put my thoughts together. I've had numerous experiences with this process crisis and then what I would call resilience. Um, I love the 25 and I, and I do have do you have it in the five? In my personal law, unconscious. Um, so it's been something that is always been there for me that I could access, not necessarily mentally, even as a child. Um, I recognized it, I had no idea how to name it or anything, but. Um, It's always served to me, even under criticism. So what you know that that piece about landing on your feet, I would do things that now I understand, but as a kid, you know, you you're just sort of rolling along um, and make decisions, leaps of faith per se. And it would always come out right, but people would doubt me or criticize me before the end of the experience <laughs> and kind of talk about bruised ego, you know, kind of had to weather all that stuff, but I was always sort of vindicated in the end. And in, I had a really strong experience, um, near death experience early on. And, and I would say that that's what this, process is it's not a thing this 25 is a process and when you deeply meet um the edge of your physical world your life as we know it in the body there's this um or i experience this innate intelligence that operates and you can't control it you can't mentally organize it I can't even talk about it you know explain it and people have spent years and many books and lots of meditation all kinds of things trying to explain this but I would say just there's an, an essence of intelligence that we don't orchestrate Mm. And that it's part of the nature of our design. That's really what infiltrates our design as humans. But it's part of the universe. That's why this is a universal energy. It's the, the intelligence of the universe. And recently, some of you know, last year about this time, I had, I had been monitoring some symptoms, but it, they exploded. And I was severely ill, shockingly. And during the illness, which was 
physically horrible, but during the illness, all I could do was lay down. I couldn't stand up, I couldn't sit up, I couldn't eat, all that stuff. Um, but I spent a lot of time during that illness just exhaling, just mm. breathing, surrendering, being. And the, the places I remembered, it wasn't a new discovery. It was almost like, oh, yes, I know this. I know this. And I could physically feel this innocence, the, this intelligence entering my cells and doing things that were healing. And of course, there's physical repercussions to all the procedures and all that stuff. But the level of experience of that innate intelligence was just magnificent. And it still carries through today, through everything. And I just want to say that was my experience, but it's available to everybody. It's truly available. You might find it, you might enter it from different angles, but it's, it's there. It's really there for you. Mm. Yeah, beautiful, Anna. And, and it's, it reminds me of like going through the crisis and in a sense, the universe has your back at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully said. How about for you, Linda? Oh, I can so echo what Anna shared. It's beautifully that you shared. It's a process. Um, it is. I also love this trait. I also feel that it backs me up. I don't even know I have it in my past direction. Yeah. With the third quality. Um, what comes to mind immediately for me, it's the process that we are being born on this planet and we are getting shocked through our lives. And the purpose of life is to return to innocence mm -hmm. because we have to remember who we are in essence because we forget when we are born here. That's how I feel about a trade 25 it's also a returning to self it's finding the spirit of self finding your spirit finding what ignites you what drives you what you are here for and um i don't know for you anna but i really really connect with children and with animals mm. i feel like there is something in me with because it's defined in my design that's always attracting the innocence in other people mm. i'm all always um also uh, because i'm also a five one in my public role a messenger um projected on um that i can bring people to innocence i feel like mm. Um, I, I also feel like that I can see the innocence and the spirit of people. And I am really the priestess or the spiritual warrior that is um, igniting the spirit in other people because I can feel the spirit. I can feel the importance of it. And I also know that every crisis, because I also have the 36 defined in my design, I also have the 46, I also have the 29, I also have the six, all about friction, all about exploring life. It's all about surrendering to the ups and downs in life, meeting crisis, meeting friction, meeting con conflict, meeting um, the path of discovery that we are all on because we don't know as human beings what to do in this life we are just in this life and then we just have to live it that's what we have to do and then we meet life so we are always being tested and our spirit is being tested and i feel like our true spirit is being teased out by the universe and it has our back because meeting 
crises, meeting every bumps in the road, I feel like I can handle them because mm -hmm. I need to go through them in order to return to my innocence. Because in the innocence, there is, it's kind of a cycle. We start with innocence and I feel like we end with innocence. That's, that's, that's how it feels for me. So it's really everything what, what you shared here, leaping into the void. We don't know, it's a void. It's just a dark place. And that's what is so amazing. And that's serendipity also with the 46 uh, that's grounding um, today is surrendering that the universe has your back the universe is not willing to to do bad things even though it may feel like it's not personal it wants you to be yourself and if you don't listen and that's also my story i I had to be involved in a car accident. And also, that's also what I, what you shared, um, Anna. Um, it's like something takes over. And I just also heard a voice now and then, not literally, but kind of inside that guided me. And also, for example, to, to write a book about my life, about my experiences. To, in order to empower others that encounter the same things. And I just knew. And it also helped me to, um, to feel the spirit again in my life and also in me. So there is something bigger than ourselves. And uh, yeah, it works through us. And it, the more we allow it, the more it it's a wonder. So I can talk hours about this trade. It's so beautifully, but this is what I wanted to share for now. Thank you so much, Linda. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully shared. Wow, so, so very rich. And and Shelly, you don't have the 51 or the 25. I'm, I'm wondering uh, for you, how the 25 shows up for you? Well, it's really, wonderful listening to your stories and I'm, I'm have trait envy <laughs> um, because I I can see how deeply you each connect with this and for me I'm I'm it's a uh, something I can learn about but doesn't personally affect me uh, in the way that it personally affects each of you um, however I have several family members that have the 25 um, as their grounding balance and uh, with the 46 as their life work, my, my grandson, my daughter-in-law and my mother, and I see how it plays out for each of them. They are all three of them um, very much innocent and especially our grandson, um, he's got it in the quality four. So he's very influential and just the innocent way that he approaches everything, the innocent questions he comes up with, the innocent view and perspective he has on life and, the, and watching as he's making his way, trying to figure life out, um, are, just, are just fascinating. He's, he's eight years old right now and, and um, very, very bright. And just watching um, how he's kind of navigating life. And one of the things his parents keep saying is, oh my goodness, I hope he can maintain that wonderful innocence through all of this brutal life. <laughs> and because he's in the WA now in the OC 16 and in school life and interesting for him he is he started his school life career in the pandemic so he entered grade one at the beginning of the pandemic and um, it's been on and off for him so he hasn't had quite as much of the conditioning that he might have normally got um, but he's really aware of it and we we work on things when he comes over and I see how he plays out um, some of the things with his little brother that he's experiencing uh, in, in the larger group and the kind of group think of, of how things happen. I'm also taking the OC16 course right now. So this is all really fresh. <laughs> um, and that what strikes me is the 25 being the spirit of, of life. Like you referred to it, Karen, is this is the love of life. This is the, in the large organization, this is the spirit of the business. But in life, this is the spirit of life. It is the thing that 
connects us all to life. So I love how you guys, how Linda and Anna explained how this has directly impacted you in your lives. It really um, makes me, um, as I, I have a spiritual connection to, I believe we all do, it's maybe just uh, in a different different way. It's not as focused as it is or consistent as it is for, for those who have this trait to find. Um, I did notice the shift though, when we shifted into the 25, I went from uh, a really, really, really busy week last week where I was trying to take the last couple of days easy and they just got <laughs> more and more busy. Um, and then we went away for the weekend and I really realized how much work-life balance is so important that mm -hmm. I'd been finding myself, it's too easy when we're working at home to just sit down and tap on the computer again. And so, but I felt that shift because just going away and spending time with family for a couple of days, coming back, I have a whole nother attitude. And, and so I'm feeling like the 25 is supporting this right now is not remember, um, to keep your innocence of just um, being in life. And, and that was kind of what kept coming to me is no, 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 work isn't everything. You, you can just be in your life and everything else kind of flows from that. So um, that's how I experienced it um, this week anyway, mm. and what I've seen. Yeah, beautiful, Shelly. Thank you so much. And I well, see you share something. Yes, yes, please. Um, one of the things while you were talking, Shelly, um, and wonderful sharing, just, just amazing, I love it. Um, but one of the things is um, the 25, the function is identity and direction and your place, your environment, love, all kinds of love. But it's, it's also that uh, because I have it open, I've lived in many different places and, uh, you know, have learned my place on the planet is in nature and in my nature. And uh, Linda, you were talking about, because you have it defined, I have it undefined. But one of the things is when you're in an environment that suits you, that, that self-love is so much easier, that universal love is so much easier, that rest and that life balance is so much easier and a lot of times we forget to connect with nature. Something as simple as going outside or having a garden, Linda, or taking a walk or whatever, whatever it is, listening to the birds. I have a little bird feeder on my porch and I go out and have my tea and there's a particular bird that visits at one o'clock every day about, you know, and it's just lovely. It's just a little teeny thing when I can't get out and take a great walk little tiny things like that will put you back in your place in the world in your in your right place right time inside yourself I just wanted to add that yeah thank you so much Anna really beautifully said and I see Charmaine Charmaine you have your your handout I'm gonna um would love to hear from you also Unmute. There you are. Unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> cool. Hi, everybody. So I have the 25 three times in my chart um, mm. with qualities one, five, and two. I've got it in core essence, communication, and judge and discipline. Um, and I also have the 46 in grounding balance. And I'm just listening to to what both Anna and um, Anna and um, Linda mm -hmm. shared was was really interesting because I I've been I've been struggling to um, articulate. I mean, as you as you know, Karen, I was um, quite ill in uh, earlier this year, and um, when I was in hospital, I I was I was basically uh, you know lots of things went wrong and I had a, a very adverse reaction to some of the things they were giving me and I was 
um, you know, came pretty close to to kind of lights out. And what was what was you know again? I have my identity and direction open, so it's likely one of the reasons I found myself in a foreign country in a hospital, not being able to speak the language as well as I I needed to under the circumstances. And I had this very intense um, experience, which, you know, in my life, I've had setbacks and adversity, but I've never, I've never had physical failure before. I've never had failure of the body, you know, I've had the spirit and the emotions and, but I've always had my, you know, I've always had my physical form that's enabled me to kind of pick myself up and, and keep going. And I remember lying in the hospital bed just you know my resting heart rate was 130 my blood pressure was through the just on the floor um i couldn't breathe my lungs were yeah i was just you know on my way out and i remember lying in 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 the bed thinking to myself i have to disconnect from this i have to disconnect my terrified emotional state from my body, which I can feel is trying to find a practical solution and it can't do anything because I'm just so over, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just panicking. And there's something very visceral about um, facing your own mortality, especially when you kind of look around you and think, goodness me, is this where it's gonna end? Kind of in a, some back streets of a, an Italian suburb. And um, I just remember thinking to myself that my, my only chance was for this spirit that I seem to have that picks me up and, and, and finds me answers. And, you know, having to advocate for myself as well was a challenge. And I'm also a 5-1 lender. Um, so I had a huge amount of information that I've been, that I kind of knew all this stuff. Um, but I just remember very vividly this thing of like okay I need to just hand off and say okay look body you you need to just fight this battle because I'm I'm not helping you I'm I'm going to panic my way into a a body bag and um of course everything is hard connected so the more the more upset I was getting and the more stressed I was getting the, the worse it was making me mm. so I I just found it a very interesting experience to to kind of not confront but to be to be confronted with that for the first time in my life um but to realize that 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 on some level if i just surrender the the aspects of my myself or my design or whichever way you want to look at it um that it can look after me wow. and i can just have to you know it's a surrender thing and and i i i genuinely don't know how I got through it I, I have absolutely no idea I remember I had to get all the information up on my phone and show this idiot doctor who just didn't have a clue um the kind of things that he should have been doing um and trying to get out of the bed to leave the hospital because I just knew if I stayed there any longer they were going to kill me but it was just this very intel this level of intelligence that came from somewhere this was just like okay you need to just dissociate and this is going to be your best bet of actually surviving this thing and just giving over to that. So I don't know, it was like a, you know, like I like everybody's described, it, it just seemed to be this, um, this imprint of something that just went, okay, we've got this, just chill. Wow. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I feel uh, it gave, yeah, just um, it's, I, I, it, it's comforting to me to share this in this, space given what Anna and Linda have shared because it was it's still something I'm processing wow um but yeah so there you go well thank you so much Charmaine for sharing that I mean it really speaks to the power of the spirit of self that power of the spiritual warrior the fact that you have it three times in your design like what I was getting the chills it's like it's it's almost like that's really what saved your life literally i don't disagree yeah i don't disagree and i i um it's it's something that is that is my whole life is always i've always been very curious as to um the word i use is, is indomitable you know i i seem to have no matter how 
hard I hit the deck, something somehow always seems to give me, you know, I'm able to get back up. And I think my fear at the time was that I, I what I think I realized, and I think, uh, thank you, Karen, because I've just realized what it was. I think what I realized um, was happening was that I think I'd always associated my ability to get back up a physical thing. And why mm. I was panicking was because my body was failing. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm not going to make this. I, I'm, I'm still going to make it. Um, because I'd never been in that situation before. And then to realize that actually it had nothing to do with that. My body, I just had to disconnect from my body and kind of almost hand it over to a doctor who did know what he was doing. Um, and again, my five one saved my life. Because if I hadn't mm. spent so long researching and looking up all this information and trying to understand what was wrong and why people had misdiagnosed it and all of these things. And for those who, I mean, people don't know, I, 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 a COVID related thing, I've developed a heart condition called pericarditis and I had fluid, three times the amount of fluid around my heart, basically just crushing my heart. It just wouldn't, it couldn't beat. And um, it's been ignored and misdiagnosed for the past year. Um, and it just finally came to a head in January. So what was really interesting was that I'd always assumed that my fighting spirit was my physical form. Mm. Yeah, I can get back up and I can, you know, and actually that was completely wrong. And it just need, I almost needed everything else to get out of the way so that this, this, this source, this wisdom, this, this incredible indomitable spirit of whatever it is I've been blessed with, thank God, because I've certainly needed it, um, could do its thing. And just, I just was handing, just go, okay, you do that and you do, and just, you know, so it's, it's been a real, it's been a real experience, but it's good for me to retrospectively be able to um, understand it. You know, my five, one little monkey mind going on um, is, is just trying to understand why I was want to know why, how did, how did I do that? How did that happen? How on earth did I come back from that? So it's it's really good to be able to put the the, the pieces together. Mm. Thank you so much, Charmaine, for sharing that. And again, like this is a picture perfect example of of the crisis and also what's possible on the other side and recognizing that strength, strength, recognizing that that spiritual warrior aspect of yourself that really, that really pulled you through really, really incredible. I, I wanted to actually jump to, um, the trait that we have, cause, um, you were, you were talking about, you do have, um, you do have quality five, which we're in today. And this is about recuperation. When innocence is zapped of its vitality, healing is the first priority. And, uh, and I, I heard that in what you spoke about, Charmaine, and also Anna and Linda as well. Uh, the elevation is the power of the spirit to heal and be healed. This is the ability to recognize the inner meaning of affliction and to withdraw until it's healed. Um, the challenge is the weakness of the spirit, which requires healing from others. It can also be the hypochondriac uh, or hypochondria and the need to be healed by others as well. And sometimes we need that balance. Sometimes we can heal ourselves. Sometimes we need others to heal, uh, heal us. Uh, and you know, there's always that balance there. So it really speaks to what you just talked about, Charmaine. And, and also, I believe it was uh, Linda that you talked about also having quality five, uh, quality five as well. Wow. Yeah. I, I can see that there's some uh, some posts in the form as well. I don't know if uh, if Shelly, if um, if you would like to to read them. Uh, sure. Um, Yvonne has said she has the twenty five two consciously in a defined function, also the function forty six three times. I have the vessel of love, uh, and I see. I hear a lot of what is being said now that I definitely resonate with, find this also elusive and sometimes experience life as a shock. It doesn't always go smooth, but that's part of it. Exactly. Uh, and then LR, yeah. oops, go ahead. No, just, just go ahead and finish that and then-, then... Sure. 
And then LR has also said, uh, however, that 46 is the body intelligence and is where the 25 grounds into. So it is the body, just not in the way we think. Mm. Yeah, beautifully said. And yes, Charmaine. I was just going to to add, you know, my life work theme is education. And Mm. one of the things that has given me um, a lot of um have just been able to you know i i uh, the word peace that was bizarrely came to me um but it was telling the story um because when i then started looking into some of this i've realized how many people you know when women are between the ages of 45 and 60 and they have this condition something like 85 percent of them are misdiagnosed with um menopausal issues and depression and you know and I've 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 just been looking at so much information about people who have been misdiagnosed one woman was given antidepressants for two years when she had this condition so all of this stuff goes into my my experiences all inevitably turn into information and they turn into data and they turn into experience and it's thinking how how can I regurgitate this in a way and I think Linda you were saying about was it you about the book about writing your your book mm-hmm. and 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 just to try and get this you know it's um probably just part of a processing thing but i just i just remembered the book thing when um when shelly was reading that last bit out yeah yeah exactly and and ultimately what we are here to do to be Um, is self-reflected consciousness, is passenger consciousness, to be able to to share our experiences. And this is the human experiential way that we talked about last week, which is part of the crisis. And that crisis, in a sense, returning us back to the spirit so that we can share and empower others. Um, And really with what everyone shared today, it's um, pretty amazing and, and very, very powerful and hopefully empowers others as well. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes we have to endure the crisis or to, to force us to learn what we need to learn so that we can share it with others. So that others that have the same issue, that have the same problem, that have uh, the same challenges, that, that you can provide, in a sense, a guiding light for that. And I, I love the focus also, again, it's deeply connected. The 46 of the body is deeply connected to the 25. It grounds the 25. So in a sense, it's grounding the spirit right in our bodies, right? So grounding that, um, that universal love uh, within ourselves. Wow. So, so very powerful. Now I want to take a look at, at the other side of this as well, um, in taking a look at the shadow. So how you're, how you, uh, are affected when you get connected. So the shadow of the 25. So this is, if you don't have the 25 and especially if you have the 51, but you don't have Oops, how did I get 21? That should be the 25. Uh, So having trait 51, but not having trait 25. So the shadow of the 25 is the lack of spiritual guidance and direction. The 51 is the warrior. The 25 can be the priestess or the, the priest or the priestess. So this is, in a sense, not knowing what you're fighting for. So sort of a lack of spiritual guidance and direction. So the question is with the 51, if you have, especially if you have the 51 and not the 25, do you find yourself seeking or looking to the realm of spirit for guidance or for direction? Um, Are you not sure what to believe in? Are you fighting, but you don't have a clear direction in what you are fighting for? And the problem is, is that you may feel lost without spiritual guidance or direction, or you may feel wounded from the crisis And it seems to lack meaning, like, why did this happen to me? And you may feel like you've lost your innocence when something bad has happened. So the solution is that you're really designed to work with others who can help you find the spiritual guidance or direction you seek in order to gain the strength and the understanding that there's a deeper meaning on the other side of crisis 
or initiation, right? So that, that shock um, goes, goes along with the crisis because often a crisis is a shock. It's something that we're not expecting. And so again, being able to see the deeper meaning on the other side of crisis, on the other side of initiation, uh, which is the 51, is what allows you to see, in a sense, the, the, bigger, the bigger picture, the deeper purpose, the different reason, or the deeper reason. Yeah. I don't know if, it, if there's anyone. I, I do have the 51, and I don't have the 25. Um, so I can, I can deeply relate to this. Uh, and I find that I'm always seeking. And again, sometimes not knowing what to believe. And uh, I often say I believe everything and I believe nothing. And so, you know, being able to kind of sort through all of the noise out there, looking for the direction, lurk, looking for what that purpose is, looking for what that deeper meaning is. And it's really through connection with others, just like what we're having here today, that really enriches that. And it really speaks to what the purpose is. So really, really beautiful. I don't know if there's anything, Anna or Shelly or Linda or Charmaine that you would like to add. Uh, I'll just add, Karen, that my, my daughter has the 51 in her unconscious driving force. So I have watched this play out for her as well. It, she's, oh, you know, especially in her um, like mid, mid 20s to early 30s was on a real quest to find what spiritual direction she wanted to, to go in. And she has attracted and found for herself, uh, um, you know, a few friends that that have um, uh, some things that she's really interested in, but she also remains open to, like you said, you believe everything and you believe nothing. She sort of has that same um, uh, approach to things as well and does a lot of, she's a one three. So she, she does a lot of trial and error experimenting to see um, what are things that uh, work for her and which ones don't. So um, it's interesting because the other side of her driving force consciously is the 15, which is all about diversity. So um, she's also driven to find the diversity of all the different ways that people find this spiritual guidance and direction and is quite open to, to that in other people as well. Yeah, yeah, beautifully shared, Shelley. And, uh, and LR was saying, I have the 51 in my design um, in the nodes. And when I turned 40 and experienced the shocking events, I took it personally and I took my partner who has the 25.5 to help me to see that it isn't personal and to help me withstand the shock. Yeah, well said. Exactly. I have um, a relative um, that I've had the privilege over the years to see mature. And she was a 51. So we would get together and there would be this competitive energy that I never understood. That, that kind of like driving her or something to try to get answers or challenge me in this very subtle way. And then over the years, I, you know, she found some different spiritual guidance and things like that. And that energy has dissipated. There's not that constant sort of effort to, to project that towards me. I mean, because I never could uh, explain certain things to her, but through her own discovery, She's found a little bit of the answers or the experiences of this energy. And there's so much less competitive around me when we meet every so often. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. This is, this is interesting. I just had, a, had a, a flash as we were looking at this that I hadn't thought about for a long time. But when I was, when I was younger, when I was in junior high school, high school, I, I went every week, I went to a different, a different church of a different religion, because I was searching, I was seeking, uh, I, I didn't understand that this is where it was come, coming from. Uh, but again, it, it was, um, it was one of those things where I was 
searching. And it's one of those things that I've kind of searched for my whole life is this, um, you know, spiritual direction, where's the spiritual truth, you know, where does this come from? And so I've studied many different religions, I've studied many different types of esoteric things, I've studied all kinds of self-assessment tools, I've done, you know, different jobs and different, different things. And, and so I can, I can really um, now get where that all comes from, quite quite fascinating to be able to do this for so long and then go oh huh that's where it comes from um it's always a it's always a a a delight to to discover something new so yeah exactly all right well we are coming to the end of the time we'll quickly go through uh uh, just introduce the uh the celebrity it's uh reese witherspoon And if we take a look at what the life work theme is, the life work theme is healing. So uh, if you have the 25 and you have it in more of the transpersonal um, aspect, which is part of what uh, having quality five is all about, the life work theme is healing. So you're focused on maintaining the joy or the quality of life through the love of being alive in a healthy body, because remember, it's grounded with the 46, which is the love of the body. Um, So grounded by um, in life through love of being in a healthy body, and you have a special sensitivity to those struggling with dis-ease, and you're here to heal or to be healed through medicine. So... uh, So Reese Witherspoon is our, our celebrity for today. All right. I know we're getting to the end of time. So um, what I would love to hear from each of our, uh, each of our panel, including Charmaine, is just what you would have people pay attention to, uh, especially in these next few days as we're in trait uh, 25. What should they pay attention to? So we'll get there in just one moment. So again, if you are new to BG5 and human design, um, if you want to find out, do I have trait 55 or do I have (laughs) trait 25 or not? Uh, You can download your chart at the bg5businessinstitute.com. You can also subscribe to our trait of the day uh, to see what the background frequency is throughout uh, the week. You can also watch past episodes in our free resource library. And we have courses starting in May, so we would love to have you join us. I'm going to be teaching the BG5 Foundation course. I don't often teach it, but I am going to be teaching the BG5 Foundation course. So I would, uh, if you're looking to start and get started with with BG5 and dive into this information even deeper, uh, would love to be a part of that journey. And if you are already a BG5 consultant, Linda is going to start teaching the the BG5 Profit Potential Coaching Certification as well. So that's getting started as well. We'd love to to have you join us. And uh, we also have Natalie, he's going to be teaching the BG5 Certification course. So if you have the foundation course, either in human design or in BG5, you can start with BG5 Certification using this information with individuals, both in their career and in their business. So we would love to have you join us. All right, let's wrap everything up. And again, I would love to hear from each of you, what are some things that stand out or for for people to pay attention to this week as we tune into what innocence is all about? Would you like to kick us off, Charmaine? Actually, I've got nothing. (laughs) Yeah. All right. <laughs> and that's fine too. Thank you so much for, for sharing uh, and being so open with your experience. Uh, again, it's really empowering and, um, you know, really a beautiful, beautiful illustration of everything that we talked about today. So I just want to really uh, just a huge shout out and a huge, huge gratitude. And thank you for, for being here and for sharing that with us. Likewise, Karen, thank you. It's good to have somewhere to be able to talk about this and join the dots. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Thank you so much, Charmaine. And how about for you, Linda? Yeah, I was contemplating about it. Um, I feel like it's really important to 
surrender, mm. to let life flow through you. Because um, the universal love is also flowing through all of all of us and it wants us to be healed it wants us to be um, taking taking advantage of your natural gifts and talents and who you naturally are and there is a guidance um, when you allow things to unfold and so be aware of your deepest desires and your deepest passion, because there is that little voice um, that is telling you exactly what to do. And in combination with your decision-making strategy, it will guide you through your innocence and guide you through the process that we call life. So uh, mm. surrender, be aware, and uh, also enjoy. Mm, love it. Beautiful, Linda. Thank you so much. And Anna. Um, well, I appreciate everything that's been shared. And Charmaine, you may not have a comment now, but I think what you shared about getting out of the way, getting that part of your process, the, the panic and stuff, moving, dissociating from that for a bit, um, because we get in the way a lot, whether it's mentally, um, physically, whatever it is, but we kind of interfere. And so my, my suggestion for the week would be, um, not only is the five about being a messenger, but it's about receiving messages. Mm. And the messages are there all the time. It's just a lot of times we're too busy to hear them or we put meaning on them versus just experiencing them. You, you walk down the street and you hear a song and you start singing it or whatever, you know, or, or you, um, you get a taste for something or whatever. There's just always these sensory little little messages going on and and they are part of the guidance they are part of what when you experience them instead of trying to decipher them when you experience them that returns you to that level of what we call surrender to that level of what we call intelligence to this thing that's unnameable but we know what it is where you just go ah Okay, you know, so I would just suggest letting the messages come to you without working them out. They're just, that's part of what the innocence does and helps you with. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much, Anna. And Shelly. I love listening to you guys. <laughs> They're all so inspiring. Um, yeah, it really helping me realize that connection that's there always, that the way that we are all naturally a part of life, where we think of ourselves as being separate when we're really not, that all of life is us and we are it, and that it's flowing, we're flowing through it and it's flowing through us continually, um, and that 25 is one of those traits that helps us um, focus for a bit of time in this week. Um, for those of us that don't have it, if you've got it continually and consistently, that's brilliant. Um, you have more of an ongoing, steady connection there. Um, so I think for all of us, though, we all have everything that's in the design. We just have it consistently or not. So uh, even when it's not... Uh, there, we are uh, open to the fact that it exists and that it and that it flows continually. And so this week, while it's here, it's just a reminder uh, that's got a bit more focus on um, being connected with nature. And um, you know, I would say uh, 
get outside if you can spend some time in nature uh, so that you can feel it more fully and know mm. that you are part of it and it's it's there for all of us yeah thank you so much shelly yes and welcome to spring and again uh spring the return to innocence uh, really, in a sense, allowing that universal love to flow through you and to reconnect with it. So it has been an amazing, amazing discussion. Thank you so much. And thank you, Charmaine, as well, for uh, so powerfully adding to the conversation. And, uh, and with that, we are wrapping up for today and we look forward to seeing you all next week. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, have a fabulous week and we'll see you all next week. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.